was that it, within the culture, it had nothing to do with the commercial thing. Within the culture, it already broke it by giving toys the chance to copy without having to go through a mentor-student system. And then, of course, yeah, it got worse. Or better, depending on how you see it. It also spread around the world. That's, the, yeah, you know, that's the point I was going to say that. If it wasn't for someone like him or Marty, what's happened globally would never have happened. Because there was no internet, there was no nothing, it was just us. So if it wasn't for the fact that someone like, like these two people, who their, their, their thing was, had nothing to do with money, absolutely nothing. It was the love of what we were doing. And it's very evident in the photographs. But through God's hand, it was able to be reproduced and put out there. And the first time I went to Europe, they were bombing all over Amsterdam. And it was because of the fact that they had these books out. Yeah. And it wasn't for the books, it wasn't for that, whatever you want to call it, we wouldn't be sitting here today. We built the, the books underlined it. You know what I'm saying? They put, they put the stamp on it. Yeah, but they were between you and the Europeans. Yeah, and I, and I thank them for that. Because the Europeans came here it to learn what we're doing. They're still it coming here. It inspired them. I, I'll give you a perfect example. Howard Nazem. Yes. If it wasn't for what we were doing, they wouldn't have come here and turned out to what they're doing now. Yeah. You're also, a lot of the artists from New York travel to Europe. Like I know Tat's crew connected with people like Goldie, yeah. and uh, who's a, a very well, famous artist in London. Henry mentioned earlier the, the toys that were going to a studio. Those toys were myself. Yeah, well, you got to keep in mind, like when we, when we, well, when we learned about graffiti and we got into it, we were the last generations painting on the subway trains. Mm -hmm. So the guys that were before us, there were no internet, there were no magazines, we didn't have, there was nowhere that you can go to and learn about this art form. It was, you had to find another writer, somebody on your block guided you. They were like, yo, you know Bobby down the block, smoking weed in the hallway? He takes tags, he's into that. So you go, you ask him, like you look for it. Yeah, you really Nowadays, to yeah, you had to research it. And then, so you, everyone started out as a toy, but for us, like, you know, Meeting Henry and going to his spot and like just you know throughout the years it's it's stuff like that that it's it's the food that fuels that hunger to learn yep. about yep. what's possible out there because in reality this isn't taught in a school this is something yeah. we yeah. taught each other we, we would go to Henry's studio sit there and look at his portfolios full of you know Crash Days Cos Tool Seven you know, all the rock stars Kel Shot. all these guys you know TNT TMT and we grew up. Seeing it on subways, but like you said, you would see it for a split second. But in Henry's studio, you could go in there and dissect it and be like, ooh, I'm going to copy this. All while, you, all, while, all, yeah, all while you was there, one of them would show up. And you're like, and you're, you're, you're so <laughs> struck. And you're like, oh, Shabba, follow him. <laughs> maybe, maybe he knows a rack nearby. <laughs> so you guys are consider, you consider yourself part of that last uh, diehard generation? Well, no, diehard I'm, I'm the subway train. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, because like, a lot of it, you gotta remember when we started, uh, I'll give you a good example. Um, I was still painting trains when a movie like Beat Street came out. And I yeah. remember like watching, you know, they, even guys like, you know, Crash and Days and even Lady Pink, like there was a lot of gallery shows and there was like this, when it went from subways to, I thought they were all millionaires. I thought they were rich. <laughs> yeah. so I was like, oh shit, they made it. They made it, Sean, I'm gonna do that. So, but in my mind, like, you know, I was still doing what I love to do, which was the only thing I knew how to do, was to, you know, hang out with my crew and paint and rag and, you know, get our name out. Because for us, it was a subculture. We did it for each other. Yeah. We did it for not fame of the newspapers or magazines. We did it because we wanted to show other writers that, you know, we were nice at what we did. Like, it was, it was really like a battle against each other. To see who it, it was really a subculture. It was right. a sub like we did it for each other. We didn't do it for internet fame or anything. So. There was no internet. Yeah. 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 It was the internet. It the was the internet. It's Marty's fault. It's Marty's fault. I give you an example. If you really look at it with physical paint applied to something, I think it's really like the first American born art form mm -hmm. because everything else, oil painting, um, even style wise, everything has some kind of origins. Right. Mm -hmm. And yeah, cake paint, right? 
I mean, who, who else but a, a New Yorker or, or, or somebody from the hood, whether it was here or wherever they say it started, because now that's the other argument. But, you know, somebody found a can and said, ooh, I'm going to take a tag. I'm going to write my name. And then somebody else saw that and said, ooh, I'm going to do that, but I'm going to put dots in it. <laughs> so it's gone through an evolution where everyone that's participated in it has added to it. So I think, I think nowadays it's a lot different though. Back then, even simple things that we take for granted nowadays, a lot of people writing today, caps, you would have to go and steal those as well. You had to get fat caps, you'd go to the supermarket, and none of the spray starches had caps. They had somebody already beat you to them. <laughs> so then you would go for ink, you would go, that purple ink they used to stamp, you know, the prices, the egg ink, whatever, you steal that. <laughs> Yeah, you know, everything supermarket. You know, from market design is pearl paint. Like the biggest contributor. Make your own mops. Was, you know? <laughs> everything was stolen. Everything was, uh, you know, you would have a cap and you would try to make that cap last forever. You would let it sleep overnight in like a uh, nail polish remover. And you would pray that that cap wouldn't clog. And you know, nowadays you can just buy, on, go online and buy a thousand caps. Make your own airbrush with a hollow pen. Yeah, the culture has changed pretty dramatically in New York. <laughs> So the past several decades, in a sense, it's much less of an outlaw art form now where people buy paint, they um, have to, to pay things you see in New York City are right, done legally. Um, because when, a, when you do a painting that's very involved, it takes a lot of time. You can't do something like that out in the open. The train yards provided some, some security and privacy where you could do something very elaborate. And that's why that part of the art form, in a sense, the illegal art form that's also creative, that's kind of almost dead in New York. Mm -hmm. So how's um, it changed? You guys impacted graffiti worldwide, and now you're seeing it spin back. What's going on? What do you mean? You know, like it's, it's like it's changing. You got you got wheat pasting. You got all this stuff, but you I know, like, and your influence is clearly there. To, to me, I think it's great. I mean, change is good. I, I've always said that. I mean, in all things, whether it's music, whatever. I, I think. Um, you, you, can't, you can't stop creativity. It's going to go where it's going to go. You either accept it or you don't. I mean, that's, that's my philosophy. I mean, some things I don't like because, I mean, it's just my, my taste. But in terms of the, the growth of it, the changes, I think it's great. Um, I mean, again, I, I always go back to, you know, 30 years ago when we were painting, to, you know, now we leap forward 30, more, you know, 30 years again, and we're talking about this, and it's, it, it mind, you know, mind-boggling to me that... Something as simple as just taking a spray can and just expressing, you know, it's pretty cool. Yeah, but when it gets illegal, does it lose the creativity? Was that no, it of, started illegal. That part of the connection? Like, no, it started illegal. When it gets legal, no. when it gets legal. No. Well, I mean, when it gets, when it gets legalized, no, I, I don't, I don't lose think, something? To me, I don't see there's, there's no difference to me. Whether I'm doing something illegal or in a studio, it's, 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 it it's painting. It, to me, it's not. It's, that's that's in, in a person's mind. Yeah, I mean, you graffiti is still visual. Yeah. Like, it's, it's, it's a strong language without using words, in a way. It speaks to so many people that, you know what, you don't even have to understand what it says. Sometimes just imagery alone is, it could speak to the masses, which is scary for a lot of people in power that, you know what, if they can't control the illegal part of it, <laughs> if these people all get together and they have one strong message, they go out there and they say something, it's almost right. like uprising, so yeah, it scares the shit out of government. <laughs> but at the yeah, well, but at the same time, you gotta remember, now that it's kind of being, you know why I think no, it's more right. accepted globally? It's just because it's accessible. Again, when we started it, when we were doing it, we were watching guys like, you know, crash and daze in them. It was still illegal and it was, we understood and we got it. The rest of the world got on the subway trains, they didn't, they didn't care, they didn't give a fuck what the hell was painted on the outside. To them, it was an eyesore, they can't look out the window. But for us, we read into it, we looked to see what the hell they were saying. We're like, oh, that's hot. Them colors, like, you know, like, it was a language to us. But now that it's become everyone's language because of the internet and it's magazines and you know there's shows and now it's everyone's language. So what do you do with a case like this? You can't hate on it. You just gotta go. Oh shit! How come nobody paints trains anymore? They do. They do. They do. They just Why don't come run? they don't run? Uh, because it's a slap in MTA's face. They pull the train right out. Yeah, they yeah. pull it right out. Right right That's why right. if you like see any photos thing. of anything painted, no, it's, it's usually it's real it's close it's up and it's done really quick. You know, I mean, it's still expanding. Well, I mean, Henry said something good. How, how many miles of track was there? Six hundred. Yeah. 
But now, it was 600 miles a track because of the internet. It's now a global track. 15,000. Yeah. I get emails in our office from kids from like Colombia. Yeah. And they have pieces that are dope looking pieces with colors. And, and you look, you're like, is this painted on the side yeah. of a fucking barn? And you look, and you're like, this nigga painted a barn. And you're like, yeah, and it, it shows you it's graffiti is global. It's in Africa. It's it's all over the world. I think the the major appeal of it is the um, the fact that it's a youth thing and it's a rebellious thing. You know that's that was always the big thing. You know, like I would go out at two in the morning, go and paint, get home before my mom wakes up. You know, um, and the kids, you know, all kids gravitate to something that you know, like mom and dad don't like it. You know, that type of thing. <laughs> but what's happened is that the people, you know, that when I was painting and they were kids, they remember and respond to it and they're the ones now coming and buying stuff. Yeah. Because it has that connection to that part of their lives, you know? And but the, the, the big I think the big attraction is, is the uh, the the legality, you know. They, the kids yeah. love it, you know, they go out and well, I did this, you know, in the park in Budapest, you know. And the guards almost got me. <laughs> you know that type of thing. But that's 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 the main appeal. You know, then then when they see what's going on, you know, beyond that, then it clicks. That's definitely a changing in the guards going on. That's why it's been in more and more places. That when I was growing up, I would have never thought it would be in. Uh, it's in schools of the Board of Ed, uh, not only here in New York but throughout the United States. It's accepted in places that wouldn't have been accepted before, but the people that are in positions to employ art are the same people that grew up watching this yep. art form. Yep. And they're the ones that have replaced the old folks that didn't get it, they get it. So they're the ones that are now saying, you know what, I have a budget to do some signage, I can go with this traditional sign painter, or I can hire some dope graffiti artists. That what you were doing, you were also exposing People like myself who grew up in this neighborhood who were so poor that we were never taken to a museum. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't yep. know what art was, yep. but we, yeah. were playing, yep. we were playing stickball on yep. Fowell Avenue between Westchester and 156. Yep. And if you know that block, you know it's up on a hill. Yep. So every time that a train would come by, we'd we would, would stop playing and everybody would be pointing, oh shit, look at that one, oh look at that one. So you, you helped expose guys like me who the school system was failing on teaching me about art, and I didn't yep. even know it was art until I saw you guys first. I didn't see Van Gogh, I didn't see the, uh, any Rembrandts, I saw your guys' work. So I want to thank you for that. That's right. That's right.